Hi everyone, it's Bitcoin from the Big Chubowski. In the first round of this final week, uh, there's going to be one feat I'll try to do with the Holocron thing. Probably, uh, I'm fighting Dave. Dave is a war machine, so I best be careful of Dave from Mighty Glorians United with 853k lifetime. Dave is not having a good time in Fleet Arena, I can tell you that. Uh, I don't know if he ever really plays it. And Squad Arena doesn't look a whole lot better. Uh, he has four Galactic Legends, no JMK. And as far as I could tell earlier from when I checked, no Commander Ahsoka Tano either. So I've got some uh, advantages there. But uh, they've noted those advantages, I think, and went with a very heavy defense. And as a result, could not clear my defense. So I went over here, first six attempts on a General Skywalker, that's probably just a lot of trash thrown in to try to clean it up after the first attempt. So uh, I'm not imagining too much there. Maybe one extra decent team was burned there. Two on the Rex Bears 5 steam were uh, actually good to know for you in general. If you're someone who likes to use Kylo Ren unmasked with Watt and First Order Executioner there, that no longer works because of uh, the stacking offense that's on Fox that just takes a bit too long and the weapon damage does not help you to ignore defense anymore. So Fox is out of the running there and Wampa is a good alternative but then you yeah, need to keep him for that and be aware. But uh, Wampa also circumvents the taunt from Fives and would smash out Rex that way to eventually trigger Sacrifice which isn't a problem because Kyle Run Mask can take all of those aerial assaults. So that would be a way to work around it. Just uh, little FYI, I guess. So this guy really only kept one GL for offense, I think, and quite struggled there in the front. Uh, then over here in the back, three attempts as well on the Krennic team. Don't think I've ever really do that, seen that do some work beyond, uh, I guess, stripping some banners, which has always been its intention. And then over here as well, three on Newt, four on Maul, and the others were one shot. But the most surprising part to me was that he got 55 banners on the CLS team. And that's after taking out the front zone. I have no idea. Like, that's gotta have been the GL then, I guess. Which he did not use in the front after realizing he wasn't gonna clear anyway. So, yeah, I suppose that's what happened there. I have no idea how else he can get 55 banners there. Uh, and if you look at his defense, you'll immediately understand why I think it's gotta be the GL. So he has the same new team. He has nest heroes there, which I have not had the pleasure of fighting yet. People always went with the Finn version, but uh, I have a nice plan for that one. Then JKL, GK and Shaq, they're not particularly fast, so uh, I'll be trying troopers there probably. Then the JKR team, that's a pain, that's a lot of relics. It's not really fun to fight in 3v3, just like it isn't in 5v5. And then in the bottom here, a good number of GLs, three of them. And surprisingly as well, like SE with Darth Revan and Bastille have fallen. It's like, dude, the game's changed. I'm not gonna, you know, like, wh what, are you, what are you thinking I'm gonna do here that I can't do against a different variation? So it kind of feels like a waste of those two characters that he could have just used somewhere else. But uh, yeah, his choice, not much uh, I can say about that. So I'll have to use three of my four GLs here in the front. Got Ray there as well with Quill and IG. And then Bastilla with JML and Watt. That one's going to be a bit tricky because I want to use JMK there. But there's almost no data on the variant that I'll have to use to try to get through. So that one might be a bit uh, tricky. I have no clue if I can win that. So hopefully I can because otherwise I'm going to have a rough time clearing this guy. And he could actually, uh, or clearing his front walls even, and he could actually pull off a win. So we're going to get started here on gas with this team that I used last time. Last time my uh, cat did get taken out. Let's see what it looks like now. So swap to Ahsoka. Get some protection up. To resist all of that. Now put my protection up. Get a bit of courage going. And then we focus on fives until pretty much until gas is back up. Uh, I'll still do the kick here just to get Ahsoka to assist. Get 
even if there was tenacity up. So now the move is available. I'm not going to use it on fives. Uh, I actually have it available earlier here than last time. But it just means I get to work on him a little bit. I don't know why they're being so incredibly slow. Okay, gas back up. And there he goes. Generate some courage again. And in the next move, Rex should kill a character if he gets to that. I think he will. There we go. So unfortunately, it's Cat again. Uh, I guess they just really like her. Doesn't stop me from winning, but I uh, was kind of hoping I could figure out a way to make this consistent where I don't lose her. But it uh, doesn't look that way. So that's 50 banner, but uh, this is not a banner match. So I'm not too worried about that one. Uh, then next up I want to do the Bastilla fight. It's an important one. So I have to figure out soon if this is going to work or not. Uh, so this is the team I want to go with. So the idea is just to stay alive as long as possible and allow JMK to build up as much as possible so that he can eventually get rid of that uh, extra protection on JML. So that's going to be very tricky. I'll try to play this as fast paced as I can. But uh, let's go. Stats on this are, I think, only one fight that I've seen. Because people almost always have cat. So that's going to be something. Uh, what I could try to do, I suppose, is get rid of Bastilla first. Whenever I have a hit available. Because that cuts out all of her animation time, which would speed up the fight quite substantially. Oops, I was supposed to go for Bastilla there. Okay, she's lost that bonus protection, that's good. I can very quickly take her out. Also kill Watt again to get rid of that animation time. Because it adds up over the course of four minutes. Okay, and now go all in on Jedi Master Luke. I think I'm just literally gonna autoplay it and see where it gets. There we go. Really not too bad. So uh, yeah, I figured the theory made sense, but you always have to see it in practice, I guess. But once that extra stack is back, it doesn't come back. And then it's just a matter of working through sort of his own health and protection, which I still have about two minutes for. It's not a lot, but uh, it should be enough. Definitely got to autoplay this though. I can immediately tell that. And there we go. Great. That's going to make the rest of the match a lot simpler. Because now I can just say hello SEE, meet SLK and these Holocron fellas, given Darth Revan and Bastilla, will fear the hell out of me anyway. Uh, maybe gone for Darth Revan could have also made sense. It's fine though. Uh, let's just kill her off. Hopefully I can get as much of the round done as possible before Territory Wars, because then I typically don't have a lot of time. It's one of the joys of being a Territory War officer. There's things like making maps that take time. And then there are these other fun game modes like Conquest. Oh wait, sorry, fun game modes. Uh, yeah, that you just gotta spend time on. So this ray here has I believe very low offense, 9.3. It's not very low, but uh, certainly not that strong. 
So I go in with SEE what? And I should be fine there. And there we go, the back wall is looking pretty doable, that shouldn't be too much of a problem though. I might bleed banners on something here, so uh, I'll show you how that goes later. Alright, back to Grand Arena. So we've started Territory War, currently working on our 15th consecutive win. Hopefully we'll get it, that would be awesome. Uh, I'm gonna get started on this top wall here, and I guess I'll fight the Nest Heroes team first. So. My counter that I like to use with the Night Sisters, it still works on this variant. What I just have to check is kind of like what the health and protection pool on Nest is like. Because I can make it work in such a way where I hit her to very low health. Which will then uh, feed up my Talzin Stir Meter to overtake their uh, Finn and Poe. And with that I can do a group attack on Finn and he's also taken out. And then I can pick off Nest with like an AoE from Talzin and then ultimately uh, pick off Po. So I'll probably drop some banners from Po. Looks like he missed the mod here on Finn, but I do believe the Po is pretty fast, so maybe he'll take like a turn ahead of me still. Uh, I haven't done the math there, but I'm not worried if that happens. So I'll just show you how that works. Obviously Daka is nicer than uh, Asajj, but uh, I don't need her in this specific case. And I'd rather save them in case I need them for some other team that I still have to uh, clean up. So let's just go with this. So I can slow it down. I should do roughly 110k or something on Nest. 116. So that pulls my tiles in ahead and allows me to do a group attack on Resistance Hero Finn, which gets him killed. Now I get a chance to stun Po. It's 50%. If it lands, that would be awesome. It didn't in this case, which means I drop a banner. At the end of the world, and now Talzin here can pick them off as revenge with one AoE. So super easy. What would have impact obviously is the modding on Nest. Uh, if she's not tenacity modded, then uh, or if she is tenacity modded, then she's gonna counter Talzin and you definitely drop a banner. Or she's gonna counter Spirit, which gets her hit because uh, Nest's attacks will always land with the basic. So you would lose that protection too, but you'd keep the foresight. So either way, you might drop some banners, depending on the modding, but uh, all good. All right, get started with this, that. And I've seen some different approach where people wave C3PO because he typically doesn't have tenacity and it stops them from looping a lot, etc. But I personally haven't really uh, adopted it. And I kind of forgot the last time I saw it, how exactly it worked. So, uh, I don't want to rewatch it currently, but in some of the future matches I'll probably give that a shot. Because apparently people are having some more consistent runs with it. So far I haven't really had trouble with this, but uh, that's one of those things where you don't change until you actually start running into trouble. Or start fighting people that do have the particular modding that you should worry about. But so far it seems like nobody really remods this team at my GP anyway I'm sure at higher GP that it constantly happens there goes the banner and his too I guess I should have put that on C3PO maybe so that he wouldn't stealth and I could buy a bit of time here to get the protection banner back uh, I'll AoE here though he's got double confuse which means he doesn't gain turn meter uh, so I'm just gonna kill here. I'm not gonna worry too much about the banner It's gonna be a 52 But let's just focus on one shotting the board Which is gonna get pretty interesting from this point on because that JKR team that is something else Really not fun to fight on defense pretty risky to set on defense because it's important against so many different teams so he's a very fast Grandmaster Yoda, but Grandmaster Yoda is quite squishy. 
So a lot of people, what they tend to do is just keep focusing on Jolie. But the thing is with JKR and Grandmaster Yoda around, they keep buffing him and giving him turns. And that allows him to keep reviving. So actually the real goal is to pick off JKR and Grandmaster Yoda first. Uh, or just JKR and then get it down to Jolie. So that you can focus on him without him constantly reviving or being protected. So I'm going to play this fight pretty fast. I probably won't talk too much. Because uh, that's going to lead to timeouts. I could also use JML, but I'd like to pretend that I don't have JML and am forced to use this option and then see how I actually do with it. And now I'm pretty much fully in control of the fight in just one and a half minutes. So what a lot of people treat as a timeout fight, just purely focusing on getting those other two out and then leaving Jolie for last makes it such a quick and easy battle. Uh, and that's what I wanted to demonstrate there. And then there's like I was saying, I don't want to use JML. Uh, obviously, there's also still the JKL team. And I was wondering if I would be able to use my troopers there. I don't know that for sure. I've never... Uh, ran that one, but I've had it used against me actually in the match against the guy from Team Steroid. He uh, used JML on me. Uh, sorry, he used Troopers on my uh, JKL. And he used Gideon, which is a bit less ideal, but he had to to outspeed my Shaq. Uh, I don't have to to outspeed his team, so I'm going to give this a shot. I have no idea if it's going to work. But uh, yeah, let's just try. It's going to make sense to go after their Shaq first because she's squishier than GK. And since Dark doesn't actually uh, crit, I can just call an assist perfectly fine and it's not going to be a problem. So let's see how that goes. So mark on Dark. Uh, but then again, I could also do a group attack on GK and just take him out. That does seem a bit nicer to me. Hmm, questions here. Yeah, I feel like I should probably hit GK first to make the progress later on easier. Okay, now do a group attack on her. Because I'm going to do a double basic here. Or just a single one also totally works. Then do this. And now JKL is going to be a bit annoying probably. Or maybe I think one basic here should get the job done yeah there we go so super easy to take out as long as you have the modding to be faster than Shaq a lot of people think that if they run GK in there they can ditch all the speed on uh, Shaq but that is absolutely not true so uh, there you go just have to kind of figure it out on the spot but it's not too complicated just be careful of how fast Shaq T is and then you're fine now the new team, that's another tricky one. Uh, I think I'll probably save that for a bit later. And go take out some teams in the bottom here. So against Grievous, that's where I'll be using my bounty hunters. 
I think last time I lost one of them. Don't quite remember. But it still looked okay. So let's see what they do this run. Just AoE, get some ability blocks. Really nice to land it on B2 there. It helps a lot when B1 isn't there to be annoying with the tenacity. So let's see if I can get to the contract at some point. It's a bit tricky. It's just double basic here. So he's the weakest ally at the moment. So the moment I drop that protection, it's uh, taunt gone, which is now. Oh, that's not good. Great to not get uh, attack from B2 there. I think I'm at like 80%-ish. Yep. So this is okay, because this is going to kill Boba the first time, and I'd rather time that now. Oh, damn, that's bad. I thought I was okay there, uh, but this is going to get me... Nah, I might lose this one. I'll have to clean it up, I think. I thought I'd be okay, but that counter from Magna, I totally forgot. Because he gets payout here, but it doesn't uh, really do much. He does get his life back if I kill here, so... Kind of feel like I shouldn't risk it and just execute, but it's a relic 8. Like, surely the AoE is going to do the job. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. Just basic for now. And, hmm. Just keep up the basics, I think. Though no debuffs are going to stick, so I might as well just shoot. I guess that's the only buff I really get to benefit from. So this one certainly looked dicier, but still worked out. I could definitely see this lose, though. So in this case, like, going for Droidica is tempting because of his shooting thing, like the stacks that he can build up, etc. But Wampa is way more important, because if Wampa gets into that uh, kind of stronger mode, you could really end up in trouble. I can gamble for a stun here, and I will. Unfortunately, didn't get it. Uh, let's just buff up. Dispel. Put some defense down. I might lose someone here. Nah. Wow, that was crazy fast turn meter generation. And I'm still going to get a 53 here. So no problems. And if not, then uh, this is a good match to learn it in because I'll definitely clear this guy and he doesn't clear me. So start with a Force Crush. It's going to piss off Biggs who decides to immediately be a little baby and overtake me. Even though I feel like I should have way more turn meter here than him. But uh, apparently not. 61k, that is just sad. And this damage is also not very good either. 18k, really? I mean, she's a tank, etc., I know. But that seems really quite bad. Not really fun to get overtaken here. Please stun everyone. Look, this dude is like so much more reliable now. Let's fracture her. Helps a lot that she uh, can't invite anyone in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They already dropped their banners anyway, mate. But he didn't. Uh. Uh, you still get it done. You just don't want Kara to get any AoEs off. Didn't look at the stats or anything. I don't know how difficult it is to get a 53 or 54 here. But I'll find out momentarily. Uh, so I can go for Dooku first. And I think that probably makes sense. Although, yeah, I feed him turn meter, obviously. 
And no, what I said there doesn't make sense. I need to kill Maul first. Very important because he can daze and daze would be a big problem for my team. Even though, yeah, I do have a cleanse. You really don't want to end up dazed. It's also obviously the easiest to kill, so that certainly helps. No crit, that's a pity. Uh, I figured the dispel would happen first and then the damage, but maybe that's not what happens. I mean, you're hitting that guy, but he likes to be hit with debuffs, Dooku. He enjoys it. Uh, let's pass it over to him. See if I can make some good progress. I barely have any buffs and uh, still really struggling to hit him. Great, and let's just finish it off. So yeah, it's a 52, but no challenging fight at all. So I still have my JML. And I'm certainly not going to solo a new team with JML. Because I'll just get looped. Like crazy. Hopefully ability block Django. That would save me some banners. But given that uh, B1 is there to lower the protection. Uh, sorry, to, to increase the tenacity. No clue where I got lower protection from. Wow. Absolute brain fart. Um, where is her stunning thing? That's just in a unique, right? Whenever she crits, yeah. Well, let's try. Uh, she just doesn't... She doesn't do any damage, she can't crit. So that move is just a huge waste of time. Well, then we can do this and... Call Qui-Gon Jinn. Let's keep an eye on what he has available. Uh, and I'll probably just go for B1 first. Because I don't need to stun Newt at the moment. And then it makes more sense to call Qui-Gon Jinn. Because he has the turn meter manipulation with all those basics. That's pretty much why I brought him. Yeah, that's not too useful. So again, just call him. JML whenever it makes sense. And now I can ability block and control that guy. Oh, I was not expecting to kill Nude there. That's a bit annoying. See if Isla comes into stun. Nope. Uh, I'll cleanse that because Isla can kill. Though killing is also going to drop the stun. So maybe uh, the ability block. So maybe I don't want to do that. I'll just basic B1. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, that's so lame. Beat him up. Maybe I can get my protection banner back here. Please stun. Uh, resisted. Alright. 49. Well, it's down. Bit depressing though. Sending in a GL and then coming out with a 49 and he's literally just newt. Some people do like to call him GL newt though, so I guess that's uh, where he got his name from. So no Zeta on Phasma means destruction. So this guy does not have executor and he took two attempts on each of my fleets. So I'm expecting his fleets to be pretty light. Yeah, no surprises there. Can't blame him either. I was thinking of keeping my executor for offense. Really the only thing that holds me back is that it's just such bad banners. It's like worse than anything I do here. So you're just throwing banners away to be nice to someone else. And uh, as much as I like to be nice to someone else, it's... Yeah, it just doesn't make sense to uh, play it this way. So, hunted on Mr. Han Solo. Please do some crits. That's not a crit. But that is. 
Okay. Um, let's see here. So here I typically ability block the Rebel Y Wing. I believe. This has been a while. Okay. Uh, let's boost the Termeter on both ships. Jeez, I'm like improvising super hard. Try to kill here. And then this guy comes in, calls the assist to kill this. Only thing I don't like is that Consular is probably a high target here. So if they call in a reinforcement, I could lose him. Fortunately, it doesn't get to that, I think. Although, yeah, okay, he survives. That's good. It's actually good to know. But they certainly like him. So let's just buff himself up. See if we can get him to live. Awesome. So Sergeant was wasted. Now it's just a 63. Made it to Kyber though. Two rounds to go. All wins so far this season. And then over here I can use my negotiator. So last time I messed this up. Because for some reason I assumed that the uh, term meter gains are on uh, fives as basic, but they're on the unique. So even if you spec, they still gain term meter. So with that in mind, I'm just going to hit the tie bomber here. So let him put up his taunt. And then now focus on him. And then hopefully at this point here get a good shot at taking out two ships with fives. Maybe it's gonna be three. Yep. Wow. Alright. So don't even need the reinforcements there. If you can uh, of course not get evaded by TFP. 3130 is not particularly high, but uh, I'll take it. He set a pretty strong defense. So no complaints for me there. Thanks Dave. Um, yeah, maybe set a couple less GLs on defense next time, unless you have like soft counter options against these teams, because uh, that's pretty rough having dropped so many banners, uh, so many battles here. So I don't know what his plan would have been against Dark Heaven, but yeah, just don't really see it. Anyway, uh, looking forward to the final two rounds. Hope you had a good first one of the week, and uh, see you soon.